Okay, so let's talk about the FTCE Math 6 through 12 exam. And uh, the FTCE stands for the Florida Teacher Certification Examinations. And uh, because you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take the FTCE Math uh, 6 through 12 exam. This is a very challenging exam. Uh, to, it is the uh, certification that you need in order to teach high school level math in Florida. And uh, what I have for you here is a practice problem that you should be able to do pretty easily if you are fully prepared for the FTCE Math uh, 6 through 12 exam. So we're going to walk through this problem step by step. But if you want to go ahead and try to solve this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, and of course we'll walk through the solution step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And I'm also the founder of TC Math Academy. And uh, what I do here is I um, offer a lot of full comprehensive math courses. I've been doing this for many, many years, and I actually have a very comprehensive FTCE Math 6 through 12 uh, prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description below. But it is super comprehensive because as a fellow math teacher, you know, I understand the topics that you're going to have to teach, which, of course, could include things from, you know, at a minimum, you know, we're talking about high school level math here, algebra, geometry, algebra two, uh, even some probability statistics and, of course, pre-calculus and even up to calculus. So uh, there is a lot to know, uh, a lot to review to be fully prepared uh, for this. So you just don't want to go in. Uh, to this exam without doing a lot of review even if you have a degree in in mathematics like myself you know um, it could be deceiving because if you haven't you know been studying this material for quite some time it's just not going to come to you on the exam okay so let's go ahead and get into this problem so the practice problem this should be very easy for you so 8 is equal to negative 2 times x plus 1 squared the correct answer is the following x is equal to negative uh, 1 plus or minus 2i. So obviously we have a complex number solution in the form of a plus bi. Now, if you didn't uh, get this right, don't uh, panic. Uh, you know, the whole idea here with this video is just to give you some feedback and uh, some suggestions on how to prepare for the FTCE Math 6 through 12 exam. But uh, if you got this right, that is fantastic. But just, you know, again, as just kind of keep this in perspective, this type of problem would be something that maybe an Algebra 2 student uh, would, you know, be able to do or should be able to do. Uh, but, you know, the problems that you're going to face on this particular exam are going to be much more complex than that. So, again, lots to review. But let's go ahead and get into the steps uh, of this particular problem. Not that hard. Okay, so 8 is equal to negative 2. Uh, times x plus 1 squared. So what's the best approach to uh, solve this problem? Well, the best approach is to divide uh, both sides of the equation by negative 2 so we can isolate this part of the equation, x plus 1 squared. Now, of course, you could expand this, uh, take x plus 1 and square it, multiply it by itself, and then distribute it into negative 2. Uh, but that is kind of like taking the long path to solve this problem. So the easiest way is to isolate this uh, power x plus 1 squared by dividing both sides of the equation by negative 2. And when you do that, you have 8 divided by negative 2, which, of course, is negative 4. All right, so now uh, at this stage, we have x plus 1 squared is equal to negative 4. And uh, now we can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. All right, so when we take the square root of both sides, we have the square root of x plus 1 squared, which, of course, is going to be x plus 1. And the square root of negative 4 which is going to be positive and, neg positive and negative 2i. All right, so let's just quickly review imaginary numbers here for those of you that uh, might need a quick review. So at this point, we're going to take the square root of both sides. The square root of negative 4 is what? Well, the square root of negative 4 is equal to the square root of 4 times negative 1, right? So this is another principle of square roots and radicals that hopefully you, uh, you know. And the square root of 4 times negative 1 we can write as the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. And by definition, the square root of negative 1 is i, Okay, our imaginary uh, component. And, of course, we're going to uh, take uh, both roots, both positive and negative, of the square root of 4. So that's going to give us positive negative uh, 2i because we are dealing with a quadratic equation. 
So by the fundamental theorem of algebra, we definitely need two solutions. Okay, so this is how uh, you know we get to our imaginary um, component or imaginary part of this answer. So let's go ahead and finish this up. Okay, so now that we take uh, taken the square root of both sides, we have x plus one is equal to plus or minus the square root, plus or minus two i. Excuse me. So we can go ahead and solve for x by simply subtracting one from both sides of the equation. So we don't want to write our answer as plus or minus two i minus uh, one. Okay. Uh, because you always want to uh, have your complex numbers written in uh, a plus b i form, which is the real component and the imaginary component, right? So uh, we're going to write this as negative 1 plus or minus 2 i. Okay, so just a quick practice problem. Again, you know, if you didn't get this right, that's, uh, you know, just use this as feedback. Uh, but there is a tremendous amount of information that you need to know in order to teach at the high school level. Okay, so, you know, as a high school teacher, you know, even with a degree and a master's degree in mathematics, uh, you know, uh, well, actually, I have a degree in math and a master's in educational technology. But, uh, you know, it, it, there is a lot of material at the high school level that you need to know. And if you haven't been, you know, studying high school math for a while, let's say you've been doing calculus for a long time, that's great. But, you know, and also too, you need to know a bit of calculus for this exam. Uh, but the, here's the thing, you really have to be up to speed on your algebra, geometry, uh, trigonometry, and a lot of the advanced concepts in pre-calculus. So again, if you need help, check out my FTC Math 6 through 12 prep course. I'll leave a link to it again in the description of this video. But uh, with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math teaching career. Thank you for your time and have a great day.